Hello, welcome back guys to a new episode of Kathy's Reign. We're over here trying to figure out, oh, not joystick, trying to figure out a way so we can you now attempt to grab father. How's the paperwork coming along, Lenny? Um, uh, okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. Well, that's no good. We're the accident. Lunch today. So, yeah, Again? let me oh, get man. right at it. Your motivation shouldn't be limited by your growling stomach, Lenny. Let me try to talk Hello, to Sheriff. Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. Say so what? Yeah, that won't get me into. I don't want to. I don't want. Let me ask him about the church, I guess. What's your opinion on this church? It's a fine church. I go there myself every Sunday. Cool. I don't want to show him. Alright, man. That's all for now. Good. I have no clue what to do. Can I tease him? I don't want to zap them. <laughs> Can I tease any of them? Lanny, I need you to do something. I, I think he'd us? object. It's my mother's birthday this weekend. You'll have to get her a gift. A uh, gift? Like what? I don't really know your mother. For Christ's sakes, all moms are the same. Just use your imagination. <laughs> I'm expecting something nicely wrapped on my desk by the end of the week. Uh, okay, boss. <laughs> yeah, that. I have no clue what to do over here. Can I go in? Hey, sheriff. What's the deal with that bum? What bum? Okay, I made it in. The that you. A jail cell. Looks cramped. They wouldn't really like. They wouldn't me like. They wouldn't give me a chance to go in. If I ever feel the urge to clean, I'll know where to go. <laughs> huh? Very funny. <laughs> Looks like an incarcerated bum. Hey. What? I can't hear you. Just no wanted posters. I'm disappointed. No want. What a tiny TV. So soon at all. Thanks. So. That was getting annoying. Sure thing. Let me see what we have over around here. A computer monitor. Probably recovered stolen goods. There's no way small town cops would be that up to date with the modern world. <laughs> True. Just a bunch of boxes filled with office supplies. An axe, a sledgehammer, and some other heavy tools. Brilliant idea to leave those lying around next to evidence mm -hmm. lockers and locked cells. Yeah, that's kind of dumb, to be honest. Too heavy to carry around, and too noisy to use in here without getting caught. True. They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. I'll need a key. Well, that's annoying. Hey. Hi there. What is it for? So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. <laughs> for your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. How the hell did he get killed by a shopping cart? You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least 20 bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. Seven. 
deal. Good. So, uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. A jail cell. Looks cramped. Can I just... Hey. Hi there. So, why'd they put you in the... Uh, well, uh... Is that... Yeah, that's... Your own. I take my... Hey, well, uh... To be fair, but that's... I think... You're right. Okay, gotta go. See ya! Uh, when do I tell him when exactly? Oh, I'm gonna go out and see. Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I, I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Okay, I have to make this quick. Yeah, come on. Lots of police reports, organized alphabetically by the looks of it. Okay, let's have a look. An individual was character on the right side of the dirt road, a few miles from Conwell Spring, blindly walking forward with his eyes open. His eyes up, wide open. The subject was identified as Joseph Rain. He did not uh, respond when touched or spoken to. He appeared to be dirty from head to toe and wet to his knees. Mr. Rain was was uh, fiercely clutching a small tape recorder, complete with uh, complete with a tape. Being cooperative, he could uh, be led into the squad car and transported back to to the town. Okay, that date. Picked up Miss, Mrs. Rain and brought her along with Mr. Rain to the emergency room at the community clinic. Upon a routine uh, inspection of the petrol car, a tape recorder was found discarded on the back seat filed as evidence in locker number 5. Cool. Hmm, I'm gonna have to get my hands on that recorder. Let's hope we can okay, do so. Let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. It's cool. That was pretty easy. I'm guessing he's okay. Let's go in. How's the paperwork coming along, Lenny? Uh, okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. Thank you, buddy. Hey. Hi there. Uh, could you distract Lenny again? Sure, I needed to puke again anyway. Good to know. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm gonna let him do that. And I'm gonna go in again. Guess what? He's having some kind of fit in there. <sighs> Not again. <laughs> Here we go again. I got the key already. I don't think I need to mess with that anymore. Fax machines. The pinnacle of modern technology. I'm gonna do a search for I a file got again. The Lots of police report. Okay, I think we are done. I should use this time to poke around. Doing what? Oh, the phone. It's Lenny's phone. My... Just a phone. Must be a popular model. We have the same one at the dorm. Anyone? Hi, this is Eileen speaking. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I don't need to ask her about that. Yeah, okay, gotta much. go talk to you later. 
<risa> ok. How do I get him freaking out again? Fax machine. I'm gonna have to search those back. Yeah, I should use this time to poke. I already got. La I got the key already. I don't think I need to mess with. Might be. I got the. Might be some. Fax machines. Those lead to the jail and the evidence locker. Pack cigarettes. I don't want to burn that. I want to burn something. I don't see how those things work together. I prefer to smoke outdoors. That doesn't. I don't know what to do. Dude. I have no clue what to do. I'm gonna go out and come back in. Just so I can see him back there. Okay, thank you. Lanny, I need you to do something. How can I help us? It's my mother's birthday this weekend. You'll have to get her out. Thank you, buddy. All right, got it. A jail cell. A jail cell. Thank you. Hey. Hi there. Okay. See. Oh, let me listen to this. Note to self. Remember the I've been working on my research in the attic at night. Okay. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. Cool. Standard microtape labeled investigation. It should play fine in Mr. Dicto. The tape Grandpa had on him when he was found in 81. Cool. A jail s I guess we're gonna go back uh, to Grandma home now. Hey, uh, Kathy, wait. Yeah, what? what's up? Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh... <laughs> Relax, Lenny. Yes, I do eat food. Oh, well, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And and then maybe we can eat the food together? You are being so freaking awkward. I'd actually rather eat the food. <laughs> God, no, certainly not. Yeah, this one is... I'm really busy right now. Maybe later. Oh, okay. See ya. I think this is bet. <laughs> but alright, so... <laughs> Who are you, buddy? Who are you? Wouldn't like fall for her. She's cute. Not gonna lie. I should probably ask Grandma first. Oh yeah, that. But yeah, poor you, buddy. You don't have a chance. Oh, hello, dear. Not in the slightest. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? 
Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. No, hold up. Uh, Thanks, what's... Grandma. You are welcome, dear. Be careful now. Sure thing. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Nothing. The bulb must be burned out. Yeah, it is totally burnt out, unfortunately. Can't freaking see a thing. I'm gonna go down and look for a freaking new one. Okay, hold up. Yeah, I'm gonna go down and look for a new one. Yeah, I'm gonna take this one. Free light bulb. Score! <laughs> Well, yeah, in this case, yeah, it is. Somebody took to... ...to this old daily. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Hey, Grandma, do you recognize this tape recorder? Oh, yes, Mr. Dicto. Joseph used to carry that thing with him everywhere. He could be absent-minded at times. It helped him remember things. Cool, what about the There's tape? a strange message left on this tape by Grandpa. He describes making a perfect bouquet of flowers. That's odd. Joseph never used to give me flowers. I have terrible allergies. Maybe it's some kind of code then? Your guess is as good as mine, dear. Well, I don't want to show her that. The lights are out in the attic. Oh, well, there should be a whole box of light bulbs around here somewhere. Do you remember where? Now, where did I put it? Oh, dear, I think it's in the attic. That's just terrific. <laughs> I'm sure you'll figure it out, dear. <laughs> yeah, I guess I will. Well, Thank gotta go, you. Grams. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. Well, I'm just gonna go to the attic, and luckily I got a new one. You don't have to know where I got it from. So I'm gonna have maybe to replace it. Replace that one. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Standard light bulb. Looks intact and good to go. Either this was a case of sudden kleptomania, or I actually have a good use for this thing. Well, then let's use it. There we go. This cool. Now I can see. Various books and office supplies. Nothing in particular catches the eye. Hmm. Let's see this, uh... This bag. Yeah, I don't think. A leather briefcase sealed by a combination lock. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and I'm gonna. Nope, that's not it. Yeah, I don't think I know the code. Not yet, at least. Very. Decades old coffee. Lovely. Drink it. Uh, yeah. I'm good, <laughs> thanks. Drink it, it's in you. It's about the new. It looks like someone was doing geometry. I can't make much sense of it. An old typewriter covered in cobwebs. Cool. Just some old bills. Nothing interesting. A thick book about math. Might be something useful in there. Could be. Empty. I've already searched that. What about this one? Nothing. 
Well, that's freaking lucky. A worn office chair on wheels. I'm feeling a sudden urge to do a race. Do so. I guess I'm gonna talk with the grandma. Oh. Mr. Bear! Oh, how did you get all the way up there? Good idea. You just keep watch. I'll do the searching. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think I find anything over here in particular. I'm gonna talk with the grandma again. Maybe she knows the code. Oh, hello, dear. Hey there. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? I found a locked briefcase in the attic. Do you know anything about it? Oh, that old thing? Joseph said there were just some old boring Air Force papers in there. If that was the case, why use an intricate combination lock? That's a very good question, dear. In any case, I wouldn't know how to open it. Well, that sounds cool. I found this book in the attic. Recognize it? Oh, yes. I bought it for Joseph's birthday once. He was always fascinated by numbers. He believed that math could explain everything in this world. He was a man of science. There's no denying that. Well, that's going on, but like... See you what? later, Grams. Take care, dear. Well, how could I find the... The freaking code. I'm gonna cover here. A decent-sized book collection. Most of them science or history related from the looks of it. I think I can find anything over here. Can I move Some this? Some kind of winter forest scene. I've always wondered if it's supposed. No, I cannot. Over here. A small table lamp. Yeah, let me check this. Nah, nothing like that in here. Nah, nothing like that in here. I don't think we got anything over here. Let's go up. Uh, what did I miss over here? Not it. Three, one. Okay, let me put that number. Three, one, four, one, five, nine. Let's try this. Three, one, four. One, five, nine. Yeah, that would have been too easy. I doubt the book alone is enough to solve this. I'm gonna try a couple of numbers, cause why not? That combination makes no sense. <laughs> uh, one, one, two, three, four. Six numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, I'm got, not going to go into free combination over here. That's going to be too hard. Can I?
Not now. There has to be some way of figuring out the code. I'm sure both the math book and the first message on the tape have something to do with it. That combination... Okay, let me... Note to self, remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. Three. I've been working on my research. Three, right. Three, five, okay. Two blue, one, two. Wait, shit, forgot the number. Three red, two, three, five. Two blue. Let me look at that. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue f I've been working on my research in the attic at night. Oh no, I'm gonna try this one. I must be missing something. What was that we- Nope. I have no clue to do this. That combination. I, I just don't want her to worry. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Note to self. Three Remember red roses. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red Yellow roses, blue, a blue... Two yellow. Three red, two three five, one a blue, two three five one, two three five one, uh three one, two three five one, three one. That should yeah. be it. A thick yellow envelope. I knew it. I freaking knew it. Test it with the math book. 
It's the envelope I found in the briefcase. Let's see what's in here. There were two pictures, a newspaper clipping, a key, and a tape inside. Remove this one. Standard microtape labeled answering machine. It should play fine in Mr. Dicto. Cool. The tape I found in the briefcase. It seems that it was used in an answering machine at some point. You've reached the Rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. You people make me sick. We're never coming back. Don't call, don't write. If you ever try to contact us, I will call the police. Who's that, Kathy's mother? Joseph, you there? It's me, Cocky. I, it happened to me too. And I'm not going to tell any of those bastards. They got it all wrong. You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Hmm. I wonder who this cocky is. What about the lady, the crazy one? Looks overexposed. I can't make much out. I think I see trees in the background, but most of the picture is just bright white. There's probably some way to enhance this back at school. I'll figure it out tomorrow when I'm back. Cool. Grandpa in uniform with two other men. Something is handwritten on the back. Flight training. McConnell Air Force Base, 1941. Nice, I'm gonna talk with the grandma about it. Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. In early morning on Sunday the 14th, a teenage girl found dead near Conwell Lake. The girl is survived by her mother, father, and younger brother. The funeral service will be held at Conwell Cemetery on the 21st of July. The notice is dated July 15th, 1975. Tragic story. I wonder why Grandpa saved this. I saved that. Oh, yeah. Your pants didn't die that way. It's a small key. Fairly modern design. No identifying tag, unfortunately. I wonder what this unlocks. Yeah, I've got to talk with the grandma about those stuff. Maybe she knows something. Maybe she knows something. Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Does the nickname Cocky mean anything to you? Sounds vaguely familiar. It reminds me of the aviator call signs Joseph and his friends gave one another. Joseph was vigilante. I can't count the number of times he got into trouble for breaking the rules. <laughs> to this day, I have no idea how he always managed to land on his feet. <laughs> Must be hereditary, given the things I've gotten away with. Every time I wake up, I am genuinely surprised that I'm not in jail. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad, dear. But to get back to the subject, you don't have any idea of who this cocky is? I'm afraid not, but the Air Force might be a good place to start. Cool. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Can you tell me anything about McConnell Air Force Base? It's not very far from Conwell Springs. Joseph was stationed there for some time during the war. I believe they're still training young pilots there today. 
So when did Grandpa enlist in the Air Force? Oh, it was barely past the honeymoon when Joseph left to fight in that terrible war, together with his best friend Charles and my brother Andrew. Those were nerve-wracking years. I was so worried, I thought I would burst. Every short visit from Joseph was a joy, but he kept going back to the front, to my great dismay. When I told Joseph about being pregnant with your father, he finally realized that enough was enough. He had done his duty. Shortly thereafter, he returned to a quiet farmer's life in this very house, helping your great-grandfather with the crops until he passed. That's sad. Do you know anything about a young girl drowning around here? Oh, yes. It was the saddest thing. She was only 16. We never really knew the family. They preferred to keep to themselves. Do you remember the name of the girl or her family? I'm awfully sorry, dear. I, I just can't recall. That's okay, Grandma. I was just wondering why Grandpa would have wanted to save this. Joseph was always affected by the tragedy of others. Perhaps he wanted to do something for the family. In any case, he didn't speak to me about it. I see. See you later, Gramps. No. Take care, dear. I didn't mean to go. Mind if we talk? For Not at all, dear. I already talked to her. On the investigation part. Grams, can you tell me anything about this picture? It looks awfully bright. Perhaps something was wrong with the camera. Yeah, maybe. I should try to figure something out tomorrow at the university. Cool. Look at this photo I found in the locked briefcase. Goodness, I haven't seen that picture in years. This was taken when Joseph was stationed at McConnell Air Force Base. That's him right there on the left. What about the other two? I don't remember the name of the smiling man in the back. The gentleman on the right was Joseph's best friend, Charles Wade. What can you tell me about Charles Wade? Well, I do know he has made quite a name for himself since he and Joseph went to war together. Apparently, he came up with some brilliant piece of engineering for the airplanes. They use it everywhere now. Any idea how to get in touch with him? I'm afraid not, dear. I haven't seen him for years. He and Joseph grew apart before you were born. Any particular reason for that? Oh, uh, not that I know of. I see, I see. Do you know anything about this story, Grandma? Not much, dear. It was the saddest thing. The girl was only 16 years old. We never really knew the family. They preferred to keep to themselves. Do you remember their names? Mm, let me think. I'm awfully sorry, dear. I just can't recall. That's quite all right, Grandma. I was just wondering why Grandpa would have wanted to save this. Joseph was always deeply affected by the tragedy of others. Perhaps he wanted to do something for the family to ease their pain. In any case, he didn't speak to me about it. Okay. Do you recognize this key, Grandma? I found it in the attic. I'm afraid not, dear. Well, I guess that's well, all. Well, gotta go, Grams. Talk Thanks, to you later. Uh, Bye, Kathy. Lady. Actually, no, not at all. Yeah. Mind if we talk for... I don't think we need to discuss that anymore. She did talk about this one, though. Well... See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. Well, I guess. Um, I'm gonna end the episode over here. That should be enough for today. Hope you enjoyed it, and let's see you next time with a new one. Take care, everyone. And ciao, ciao. Ouch.